Alright guys, I'll just take one minute of your precious time. Just wanted to let all of you know that if you want to practice all these questions using artificial intelligence and practice on a portal which is as similar as your actual PT exam which will give you exact scores which you are likely to get in your exam, just register on languageacademy.com.au. You can practice as many questions. On top of that, you can get instant feedback, instant scores and instant suggestions on what are the things you need to work on and how to improve your mistakes and turn them into your strength. You can also take a full scored mock test. You'll get a full scorecard. You'll get in-depth analysis. You'll get tutor's feedback. One mock test is available for free and four sectional mock tests are available for free. You just need to go on languageacademy.com.au. Register over there. Use Google Chrome, log in and practice and make sure you get your desired score at the earliest. Now you can continue with the video or you can just log on to languageacademy.com.au and practice all these questions over there as well. All the very best. I'll see you very soon. Dentistry is a profession focused on the prevention and treatment of oral diseases. It also involves addressing jaw malformation, tooth misalignment, and birth defects such as cleft palate. The practice of dentistry has been traced back to ancient times. For instance, Egyptian skulls from 2900 to 2750 BCE show evidence of small holes near tooth roots, which were likely drilled to drain abscesses. Egyptian scrolls dating back to 1500 BCE contain accounts of dental treatments. It is believed that the Egyptians may have performed oral surgery as early as 2500 BCE, although the evidence is limited.
In some cases, individuals who have been bitten by snakes, or those who suspect or imagine they have been bitten, may experience noticeable symptoms and signs, even if no venom was injected. This occurs due to a rational fear of the consequences of an actual venomous bite. Anxious individuals may hyperventilate, leading to pins and needles sensations in the extremities, spasms in the hands and feet, and dizziness. Some may experience vasovagal shock following a bite or suspected bite, characterized by faintness, collapse, and a significant decrease in heart rate. Over the course of weeks and months, malnutrition can give rise to specific diseases. For example, inadequate iron intake can result in anemia, while insufficient thiamine can lead to beriberi. Starvation occurs when a severe lack of food persists for an extended period, preventing the body from obtaining sufficient calories to meet its energy requirements. During starvation, the body's reserves are gradually depleted, causing significant weight loss, tissue wasting, and ultimately, death. When faced with starvation, the body enters a survival mode. Initially, the first day without food is similar to an overnight fast between dinner and breakfast the following morning, with low energy levels that improve after a morning meal. Teachers have been aware for a long time that memorizing information without deeper understanding can result in a superficial grasp that is easily forgotten. However, recent research in neuroscience is providing insights into how the brain is wired to forget, emphasizing the importance of strategies to retain knowledge and enhance learning. In a recent publication in the journal Neuron, neurobiologists Blake Richards and Paul Franklin challenge the prevailing view that forgetting is a process of loss where crucial information gradually fades away despite our best efforts to retain it.
Progressive enhancement is a design approach rooted in the concept that rather than designing for the least capable web browsers or distorting our code to achieve a consistent appearance across all browsers, we should offer a fundamental set of functionality and information to all users and then progressively enhance the appearance and behavior of the website for users with more advanced browsers. This development practice is highly productive. Instead of spending excessive time figuring out how to add drop shadows to element borders in every browser, we simply utilize the standards-based approach for browsers that support it and exclude the implementation for browsers that don't. In the past decade, the number of Australian overseas departures has increased from 1.7 million to 3.2 million. This represents a robust average annual growth rate of 6.5%. This study examines the demand for outbound travel to each destination country using travel demand models focused on short-term resident departures. The models are formulated with a double logarithmic linear functional form, where overseas departures serve as the dependent variable while real household disposable income, travel and accommodation prices in Australia and overseas, and the exchange rate act as independent variables. The Earth's atmosphere is in constant motion. Wind is the movement of air, sometimes slow and gentle, and other times rapid and forceful, generating gales and hurricanes. Regardless of its intensity, wind always begins in the same manner. As the sun traverses the sky, it heats certain parts of the land and sea more than others. The air above these hot areas warms up, becomes lighter than the surrounding air, and starts to rise. Conversely, Cool air descends due to its greater weight. Winds occur because the sinking, cold air displaces the rising, warm air, creating a suction effect. Winds blow wherever there is a disparity in air temperature and pressure, always flowing from high to low pressure.
A 3 degree increase in temperature may seem insignificant, but it represents a temperature rise that corresponds to the global warming that took place between the last ice age, approximately 15,000 years ago, and the warmth experienced in the 18th century. During periods of cold on Earth, massive glaciers would extend from polar regions as far south as St. Louis in the U.S. and the Alps in Europe. However, in the latter part of this century, when temperatures are 3 degrees hotter, glaciers worldwide will melt, and we will face a climate characterized by frequently unbearable heat, droughts, storms, and floods. When driving along any highway, one can observe a proliferation of chain restaurants. In all likelihood, after traveling a considerable distance, you will come across the golden arches of McDonald's, along with signs for Burger King, Hardee's, and Wendy's the four major players in the burger industry. Despite its name, Burger King has been unable to claim the burger crown, as it has failed to surpass the market leader, McDonald's, in terms of sales. Burger King remains in the second position. What's more? Burger King has experienced a 22% decline in customer traffic over the past six years, while the quality ratings of its offerings have dropped, whereas the ratings for the other three contenders have increased. This course offers students a comprehensive understanding of the fascinating fields of politics, international relations, and commerce. Students will delve into the functioning of political institutions worldwide and explore the intricate realm of international relations. The curriculum covers various topics, including governance, public policy, public administration, national security, border control, and commerce. 
By studying these subjects, students will receive a comprehensive and up-to-date education on the various issues encompassed within politics, international relations, and commerce. Water security is an equally important challenge that cannot be overlooked. The UN Environment Programme, UNEP, has highlighted the fact that approximately one-third of the global population resides in countries experiencing moderate to high water stress, which disproportionately affects the impoverished. With the projected growth of the world's population, ensuring an adequate water supply for human sustenance will become increasingly challenging. Moreover, the competition for this scarce yet crucial resource may exacerbate instability and conflicts within and between nations. Leadership hinges on obtaining permission from others to guide their thinking. It is a bestowed moral authority that grants the right to organize and direct the endeavors of others. However, moral authority is not derived solely from effective management, improved communication, or motivational skills. It stems from various sources, such as authenticity, genuineness, integrity, and a profound understanding of the relevant business. These factors instill confidence. Leaders lose their moral authority for three reasons engaging in unethical behavior, succumbing to self-doubt and wavering conviction, or becoming blinded by power, losing self-awareness and disconnecting from their followers as the surrounding context changes.
These two paintings, both titled, Sunflowers, are widely regarded as the finest among the several portrayals of the drooping, thick-stemmed blossoms created by Van Gogh in 1888 and 1889 during his time in Arles. The first painting is currently housed in the National Gallery in London, while the second resides in the Van Gogh Museum in Amsterdam. Van Gogh himself referred to the latter as a repetition of the London painting. However, art historians and curators have long been intrigued by the extent to which this repetition differs from the original work. Is it a mere copy, an independent artwork, or something in between? It revealed evidence of nuts, grasses, and green vegetables, as well as chemical traces of wood smoke and intact starch granules, indicating the consumption of carbohydrates. Additionally, compounds from medicinal herbs like chamomile and yarrow were detected in one individual's plaque. While these herbs lack nutritional value, the researchers speculate that Neanderthals may have consumed them for self-medication, a behavior also observed in primates such as chimps. It's worth noting that Neanderthals did not receive regular dental checkups, despite their potential knowledge of medicinal plants. A common belief regarding agriculture is that it requires more labor than hunting and gathering, which has led to theories suggesting that people were compelled to adopt agriculture due to a lack of alternatives. While this may ultimately be the case, there is another perspective to consider. Initially, agriculture may have emerged because people sought special status foods for feasting, satisfying a social need. Much of human behavior is influenced by competition with others, driven by the desire for new things, higher statuses, and various forms of recognition. In smaller-scale societies, these factors often revolve around the ability to host feasts.
Despite the decline of the Vikings over a span of four centuries, the people of the Shetland Islands, situated off the north coast of Scotland, continued their trade through the North European Hanseatic League. The Hanseatic merchants purchased salted fish in large quantities, offering cash, grain, cloth, and other goods in return to the islanders. This arrangement persisted until the Act of Union between Scotland and England in 1707, which prohibited the Hansa merchants from seeking shelter in Scotland. Consequently, Shetland fell into an economic depression. Independent farmers were forced to sell their land and subsequently became obligated to pay rent, eventually transitioning into serfs. Adidas has joined forces with an organization called Parley for the Oceans, which is dedicated to collecting plastic waste from the ocean. By utilizing this plastic waste, Adidas produces shoes that are not only environmentally friendly but also advantageous for their business. In the eyes of a growing consumer segment known as hipsters, who are familiar with and value sustainability, choosing between a generic shoe and an Adidas shoe made from ocean plastic, the Adidas option would be the clear winner. These individuals not only prioritize environmental consciousness but also tend to share their enthusiasm about such products at every opportunity. Since the Meiji period, land reclamation has been conducted along the Tokyo Bay coastline. The simplest areas for landfill projects are those with a depth of fewer than 5 meters, and sand from the floor of Tokyo Bay is used for these endeavors. Ongoing land reclamation projects have significantly altered the topography of the Tokyo Bay shoreline compared to the pre-modern era. As of 2021, approximately 249 square kilometers of reclaimed land area can be found in Tokyo Bay. Greater Tokyo produces a substantial amount of household waste, leaving little space for conventional garbage disposal sites.
Conventional sales involve scenarios where the home is fully owned by the seller or when the seller's mortgage balance is lower than the fair market value. These sales facilitate faster transactions between the parties involved, unlike foreclosures, short sales, or probate sales. For our buyers, particularly first-time homebuyers, we highly recommend conventional sales to avoid the complications that may arise with distressed properties or probate sales. Most buyers seeking to move into their dream homes as soon as possible prefer conventional sales. Distressed properties often require several months for the seller's bank to approve an offer or for court proceedings in the case of probate sales. The simple explanation for the sudden drop in share prices across various sectors yesterday is that it created a buying opportunity, as market analysts often refer to it. This decline tends to attract investors who search for undervalued assets amidst the aftermath. Investors concluded that sellers had become overly pessimistic, leading buyers to drive up all the major indexes today. In early trading, the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P 500 all experienced approximately a half percent increase, which was not surprising. The sell-off continued overseas, with European and several Asian markets remaining weak. Historical time series data from 1973 to 1998 were employed to estimate the models, obtained from various sources such as the World Tourism Organization, Australian Bureau of Statistics, World Bank, and International Monetary Fund. The findings indicate that the estimated elasticity parameters align with standard economic theory. The number of short-term resident departures is positively influenced by per capita real household disposable income and the price of domestic travel and accommodation, while it is negatively influenced by the price of overseas travel and accommodation.
The main argument presented in this article is that when students use visual art as a stimulus before writing, they are expressing their ideas through both images and words. Engaging in the process of creating art allows students to distance themselves from their ideas, which enables them to expand on them, add more details, and produce more cohesive text. Writing is not merely about putting words on paper. Skilled writers are capable of using carefully chosen words, phrases, and text structures to create imagery and convey their ideas effectively. However, emerging writers often struggle with the technical aspects of writing, such as fine motor control for legible handwriting, spelling pattern recall, and the use of syntax and grammar rules. Starting from the late 1950s, the Australian government began regularly funding universities, and in 1974, it assumed full responsibility for funding higher education, eliminating tuition fees. The goal was to make university accessible to all Australians who had the ability and desire to pursue higher education. However, since the late 1980s, there has been a shift towards increased private contributions, particularly in the form of student fees. In 1989, the Australian government introduced the Higher Education Contribution Scheme, HECS, which included a loan program to assist students in financing their contributions. As a logical extension of this principle, each country must have the freedom to determine its own development strategy. It is crucial for all donors and lenders to accept the concept of country ownership of national development strategies. This entails recognizing that development strategies should not only align with each country's specific circumstances but also be prepared and implemented under the guidance of their respective governments. The 2005 World Summit also acknowledged the importance of developing countries striking a balance between their national policy priorities and international commitments.
All approaches have the common goal of enhancing blood circulation to tense areas and relieving painful muscle knots referred to as trigger points. According to Kippen, trigger points are areas of muscle that remain contracted most of the time. The contraction leads to pain, which further triggers more contraction, creating a vicious cycle. Deep tissue massage aims to disrupt this cycle. As I discovered firsthand under Ogedongbi's expert touch, the technique involves applying pressure to the trigger point, momentarily cutting off blood flow, and then releasing the pressure. This prompts the brain to increase blood flow to the affected area, encouraging muscle relaxation. The temptation now is to think, since everything is online, I don't need to attend class," noted Dr. Carrie Lee Krauss from the Center for the Study of Higher Education at the University of Melbourne. As the nation's universities open their doors for the new academic year, initial class attendance is usually good, but it often dwindles over time. Dr. Krauss explained that there is concern at the university level about the decline in student attendance and the reasons behind their reluctance to attend lectures. However, due to lecturers' pride and the fierce competition among universities for students, very few are willing to publicly acknowledge the poor attendance rates in many classes. It is frequently argued that a state's foreign policy revolves around its borders. While this statement may be exaggerated, it contains a grain of truth. Particularly during the formative years, a state's relationship with its neighboring countries is significantly influenced by its frontier policy, especially when borders are not clearly defined. In the past, Empire builders sought to expand their imperial frontiers for various reasons, such as subjugating kings and princes to secure their allegiance, obtaining substantial tributes or wealth for the state, and ensuring the security of the empire's core against external attacks by establishing buffer states along the borders.
The lessons may not have been in vain, even though they may not have followed the standard Latin American Spanish or Castilian, which are predominant in U.S. schools. The confusion stems in part from the diverse nature of the Spanish-speaking world. As Spanish is spoken in 19 different countries and Puerto Rico. Consequently, there is no singular standard dialect. The most commonly taught Spanish dialect in the U.S. is Standard Latin American, also known as Highland Spanish because it is primarily spoken in the mountainous regions of Latin America. While each country retains its unique accents and vocabulary, countries like Mexico, Colombia, Peru, and Bolivia generally use Latin American Spanish, especially in urban areas. Fans of biographical criticism have an abundant resource in the literary works of Hans Christian Andersen. Similar to Lewis Carroll, and to a lesser extent, Kenneth Graham, Andersen had a profound discomfort in the presence of adults. Of course, all three had to engage and work with adults. But their ability to connect genuinely thrived in the company of children and their simpler worlds. Anderson even ran a puppet theater for a period and became incredibly popular among children. Additionally, he authored an impressive collection of fairy tales, which have been published in countless editions since the 19th century. When I entered my master's program at Oxford last year, I had just completed medical school and had made the decision to permanently leave the field of clinical science. Looking back, I now realize that I didn't fully appreciate the weight of this decision at the time. However, today I have a clearer understanding of the repercussions of abandoning my original profession. When I meet old friends who are now practicing physicians and surgeons, I can sense the divergence in our perspectives on medical issues. They focus on examining the effects of diseases and attempting to eliminate or alleviate them, while I strive to comprehend how they originate in the first place.
The principal recommendation of world conferences emphasized that countries should assume full responsibility for their own development. This responsibility is considered a necessary consequence of sovereignty. According to the Monterey Consensus, each country bears the primary responsibility for its economic and social development. Highlighting the Crucial Role of National Policies and Development Strategies The Johannesburg Plan of Implementation called for all governments to commence the implementation of National Sustainable Development Strategies, NSDS, by 2005. Additionally, the 2005 summit set a target for all developing countries to adopt and initiate the implementation of these strategies to achieve internationally agreed goals by 2006. A new book, co-authored by an academic from the University of East Anglia, emphasizes the importance for organizations to enhance the integration of their sales activities, both internally and in alignment with customers' requirements. The book delves into how sales can contribute to fostering a customer-centric approach within organizations. While also examining their response to various challenges such as heightened competition, increasingly demanding customers, and a more intricate selling environment. In light of rising costs and growing customer influence, organizations must strategically allocate their resources. Researchers have created transparent solar panels that can function as power-generating windows in residential buildings, even in densely populated urban areas with numerous apartment blocks and shops. Traditional solar panels rely on solar cells to absorb sunlight and convert it into power, which makes them unsuitable for use as windows. However, the newly developed transparent luminescent solar concentrators can selectively absorb invisible solar radiation like infrared and UV light, while allowing visible light to pass through. 
These panels remain transparent to the human eye while still harnessing solar energy that can be converted into electricity. Despite being accomplished and responsible, teenagers can also exhibit reckless behavior, exemplified by the scenario of a teenage daughter causing a car accident while texting her friend. Two physicians from Children's Hospital Boston and Harvard Medical School shed light on the reasons behind such behavior by studying the distinct structure and chemistry of the adolescent brain. According to Professor Francis E. Jensen, a neurology specialist, the teenage brain is not merely a younger version of the adult brain. Instead, it represents a paradoxical period of development where teenagers possess sharp minds but may struggle with utilizing them effectively. A catastrophic event of mass extinction occurred 66 million years ago when a meteor collided with the coast of Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula, leading to the end of the dinosaur era. Mass extinctions involve a brief time frame during which a significant percentage of biodiversity or distinct species perish. Unlike past events caused by natural phenomena, the current sixth mass extinction is primarily driven by human activities, with land and sea utilization being the primary contributors to destruction. The conversion of natural habitats like forests for agricultural and urban purposes plays a significant role, with animal farming contributing to forest degradation and the loss of biodiversity.
On Friday, a new law was implemented that mandates tobacco companies to cover the expenses for the cleanup of numerous discarded cigarette butts found in public places. This legislation is part of a broader environmental bill aiming to combat single-use plastic pollution by prohibiting items like cutlery, plates, straws, polystyrene cups, and cotton buds. The presence of cigarette litter not only creates an unpleasant sight, but also poses risks to wildlife. Animals may mistakenly ingest the butts, resulting in injuries or even death. Additionally, the chemicals within the cigarette butts can contaminate the soil and water, posing a threat to the environment. The nonverbal sense of number implies that animals possess the ability to mentally represent the quantity of objects in a collection, which holds evolutionary significance and provides adaptive advantages. For instance, bees can count individual dots and potentially use this skill to identify flowers based on the number of petals. Numerical abilities play a crucial role in navigation as honeybees sequentially count landmarks to estimate the distance between their hive and a food source, aiding them in plotting their return route. Moreover, recognizing numbers may confer survival advantages, such as smaller fish joining larger shoals to reduce the risk of predation. A study involving 21 infants below the age of 7 months discovered that walking with their mothers proved more effective in calming them down and facilitating sleep compared to holding them in a chair or placing them in a cot. This finding aligns with the observed transport response seen in other mammal species, where infants exhibit passivity and reduced heart rates when carried by their mothers. The study, which observed crying babies in Japan and Italy, indicates that walking with a crying baby is an effective method for soothing them.
in our attempt to comprehend the locomotion of orangutans, as well as other apes and the shared ancestor of humans and apes, we seek to gain insights into their movement patterns. While we have gathered extensive knowledge of their movements in the forest through a year-long recording of various locomotive behaviors, we have yet to determine the energy expenditure associated with these movements and the strategies employed to navigate through the canopy. To address this issue, we are utilizing parkour athletes as a model for large-bodied apes traversing complex environments, observing their movement through an unfamiliar course. In recent years, paper mills have faced significant difficulties due to a decrease in demand for newspapers, the rise of digital media, and the closure of mills. This resulted in intensified competition among suppliers, allowing the mills to negotiate lower prices for newsprint. However, the mills were unable to raise prices and silently endured the consequences. Many mills were hesitant to shut down their expensive machinery, which had a high cost. However, this hesitation has now disappeared as mills actively reduce their newsprint production capacity and explore new opportunities. Now crack your PTE sitting at your home. Language Academy brings to you the smartest AI-powered practice portal, with instant scores and feedback for all the tasks. Along with the practice questions, access free sectional and full mock tests, and get instant scorecard with in-depth feedback and analysis. For more hidden secrets, tips, strategies, and proven templates, click the link below and subscribe to our video course today.